two spheres have equations, uh, absolute value of r equals 3, and then absolute value of, you've got a shifted sphere for the second one, equals 4. Part A, explain why the circle of intersection of the two spheres is parallel to the xy plane. Now, Emmanuel and I were just having a conversation uh, moments ago about how tricky it is to try and justify this with a diagram in three dimensions, especially when the question itself, see, that's a three-dimensional question. Do you see that? It's like the xy plane. I've got a plane here, and I need to be parallel to that in three dimensions, right? So I am going to use a 2D diagram, but the 2D diagram alone, not going to be sufficient, okay? So let me see if I can work this through. I know a few things about, this is the wrong color, I know a few things about these two spheres, right? From their equations, I can read off two key pieces of information. The two pieces of information that define every circle, every sphere. What can you tell me? I can tell the center and the radius. If you haven't drawn a diagram yet, go ahead and draw one. And where would we put these two pieces of information that would be useful to me? Uh, well, let's call this, the, um, this is the smaller circle, right? So what's its center? Origin. It's the origin. So um, I called my previous one like A and B, right? But this time I'm going to call this O for origin, and I'll write that as 0, 0, 0. What's my other center? 0, 0, 5. Uh, let's call this one A, because I haven't used that yet. All right. Now I'm trying to show that the circle of intersection, which on here, where is this circle of intersection? I'm looking at it in cross section, right? So I guess it would be uh, like I had here, right? It's like you're looking onto it side on, right? So it would be here. There's my circle of intersection. It's just infinitesimally thin because I'm looking at it side on, right? I want to show that that thing is parallel to the xy plane. I didn't even have a plane here or a 3D coordinate system for that matter, right? How would I go about showing this? Think with me about the information that we know and how it relates to the xy plane. If you have a look closely, I've got... You might think I've chosen a bad marker for this, but I promise it's on purpose. I've got this line joining my two centers, right? It's not an arbitrary line. Because of the particular coordinates of my particular centers of my particular spheres, this is actually a special line in the 3D coordinate system. Because you go from, in x, 0 to 0, no change. In y, you go from 0 to 0, no change. You only change in the z direction. Does this make sense? So therefore, can anyone tell me what special line this is? This is the z axis, isn't it? This is the z-axis. So what I have, in fact, and I would have used the word perpendicular if I were in two dimensions, right? If I had, say, an interval and a line, lines and intervals, two-dimensional objects can be perpendicular. This actually represents a circle, doesn't it, right? So instead of saying it's perpendicular, I would say it's orthogonal. This circle of intersection is orthogonal to the z-axis, right? That's so important, I'm going to write this down, because this is the conversation I was having with Emmanuel, right? The circle of intersection is orthogonal. And this is why we introduced this word rather than just staying with perpendicular, even though it's very useful. It's a, it's a surface, isn't it? It's at right angles to the z-axis. Oops. But since the z-axis is itself orthogonal to the xy plane, think about how we normally draw this, right? Here's the, uh, which way do we normally do it? Here's the xy plane that we're looking down at, right? And there goes the z-axis perpendicular to this xy plane that we can see here, right? So literally, the circle of intersection is orthogonal to the z-axis, which is orthogonal to the xy plane. This is pretty much it. This is my reasoning, right? Uh, this diagram here is just to help you. I haven't actually put the spheres on there, right? But you can see this is the relationship that I'm after and shows that's my explanation. I would find it very difficult to award anything which didn't use words to try and get at that um, keyword. So there's part A for me. Okay, I've got that right relationship. Then, how do I, how's that going to help me to determine the center and radius of the circle of intersection? Find the center and radius of this circle here. Okay. Hmm. 
Anyone want to suggest to me some information I can put onto this diagram that might be useful? Calvin? Um, the centers x and y value will be 0 and 0. Okay, so you're talking about, uh, oh, right, I see. You already know, don't you, what the x and y coordinates are here. Since we're moving along the z axis, uh, let's call this something like p, right? I'm going to have no change in x and no change in y, and then I have, I don't know, some change in z. So really, that's all I need to find. So far, so good? That's helpful. What other information in the question have I not used yet? Or not put onto my diagram, anyway? Pahan. The radii, right? Now, there's a couple of different places. Actually, there's infinitely many places that I could place the radii. What are they, three and four, right? Where might be places that are useful to me, being that I could put them anywhere? Say it again. Ah, now, I could go across the z-axis. So I guess that would be three. And then uh, that would be 4. Do you agree? Now, that wouldn't be wrong. The only problem is because of this overlapping thing, right? It starts to become confusing about, well, how much of the 3 is overlapping with how much of the 4? Infinite set of places we could go. I'm going to suggest maybe here is going to be useful to me. 3 and 4. Now, the reason I know this is because this 3 and this 4 are not accidentally chosen numbers. Because you can see they form a bit of a triangle here, don't they? This is why I had to choose such a, a dead marker from before, so I could draw over it. I've got a triangle there. Please tell me what kind of triangle it's going to be. Right it's going to be right angled, right? It's going to be right angled because I already knew that this distance was 5. Do you see that? I got that from the coordinates. So, bam, right angle. Okay. Now, let me just pause for a moment, remembering that all we're really after is z here, right? Well, actually, to find the center, we'll have to find the radius in a second, okay? So all I need to do is find, say, this distance here. That, in fact, is the distance z. What information or what knowledge or skills do we have access to that might help us find that teeny tiny distance z? Let me highlight it a little more for you. This is the distance I'm after. I suggest that that red distance there is z. How would we find it? Oh wow, I could go straight to projection, couldn't I? Because you're like, oh, I see this vector is casting a shadow onto this vector. That'd be a really nice way to do it, um, because that's exactly what projection does. The only problem I have with that, it's a good method, is that projection relies on what information? What do I need to put into my projection formulas? I, I need some direction vectors, don't I? In this particular question, I'm, I, have, I have this direction vector, yes? I do not have this one. I just kind of arbitrarily drew it, right? So it's a good method if I had different information. What do you reckon, Joe? Assuming this plane we're looking at is the xz plane or the yz plane, so that one of the what other coordinates equals to zero, therefore the radius of the circle that we're trying to find is either the y corner or the x corner of the uh, one of the intersection points. One of these ones. Yeah. Yep. That way we have z squared plus radius squared equals a 3 squared, and mm -hmm. minus z squared plus radius uh, squared see. equals a 4 squared. And then we have um, two simultaneous equations. OK, very good. Just in case you didn't quite follow that, right? Because we have drawn this in cross section, right? what we can imagine is, or not what we can imagine, what we are in fact looking at is one of those orthogonal uh, coordinate planes, right? an xz, xy, etc. Right? So as a consequence of looking at one particular plane, you can consider one of the coordinates is always to be zero, right? Does that make sense? On say the xy plane, the xy plane, the flat one, z's always zero because it's, it's flat down. You can't, you can't come off and have some other value of z, right? So once you've got one of them being zero, you've turned this from a three variable problem into a two variable problem and that's much more easy to handle. Now, these methods would both work with the right information. We could, by the way, using GRU's method, we can actually find what that direction vector is. It's totally doable, right? However, you remember at the start of this, um, for that other question, I loved Varen's method because it was so lazy. I have a, a method that will beat the pants off of all of you in its laziness. I think we could go back to late year 8, early year 9 to solve this question, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember we saw all these right angles in here, right? All these right angles. Um, what that means is, because you've got a right angle here and a right angle here, and you've got all these nested triangles within each other. If, for example, I were to mark in, I don't even know, need to know how big it is, but if I were to mark in that theta angle there, do you see that this angle theta is in this little triangle over here with z in it? 
This theta is also in this 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's both got theta. They've both got a right angle. What kind of triangles are these? What's the relationship between them? They're similar triangles, right? Right? Just because of time, I'm just going to show you how it plays out. Because the important thing here is, don't use an overpowered tool if you have access to an easier one that will do the same job. So you can see I've set up my triangles in here. I've just, I've realized in my own working, I'm like, whoa, too much stuff flying around here. So you can see I've, I've completely abandoned the spheres in this top diagram. Does that make sense? Once I've got the right information there, you can even see the same theta that I drew in the corner. Because we're in extension two, we can use that phrase we so enjoy, by inspection. You don't need to worry about, like, you don't need to find the angles, they're there. Uh, they are equiangular, that's all I need. The only tricky thing is you need to identify which sides correspond to which sides. You can see in the scheme that I've got here, I've got O and A, like I did here. No, I named it C. I forgot that I named it C, it doesn't matter. Um, do you remember when we first introduced similar triangles to you, Maybe your teachers were quite finicky about how you ordered the letters of the vertices um, for the different corners of the triangle, right? We said make sure you match them up. You want to know why we tell you to match them up? It's to make this next step really easy. I'm comparing sides, let me just zoom out a little bit, sides OC, that's my Z that I'm after, right, with side O. B, up there, right? Because I know this side. I have no idea what this altitude is equal to. It's an unknown length. I'm going to find it later, okay? If I'm comparing OC and OB, have a look at my order of my letters, right? O, whoopsie daisy. OC, that's the first and the third ones. That corresponds to O and B in the other triangles. Does that make sense? I did all the ordering up in this line. So OC here corresponds to OB here. Make sense? And then in the same way, OB, it's the first two here will correspond to the first two here. So it's OB on the right-hand triangle. Once you've done that, it's quite trivial, actually, to go ahead and work out the coordinates. Look, Ma, didn't even use any vectors, right? That's just the center. We find Z, it's nine over five. So that's this value here. How do we then get to radius? Where is the radius even on this diagram? It's the, uh, yeah. Isn't, isn't this, this altitude that I said we didn't know the length of before? Now, there's lots of fancy ways to do this, but, you know, uh, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you, uh, or the other way around. All I have to do is just a little bit more similar triangles, because I have all the stuff that I need here. You just need to match up the different sides. Does that make sense? And then 12 on 5 is this length here. Even a sense check on a decent diagram will show you that what's 12 on 5. Two and two-fifths. Looks pretty good to me. Okay.